Welcome again to Inlandia Literary Journeys. For the Press Enterprise and PE.com, I'm John Bender, Metro Editor. I'm here with Orlando Ramirez, Editor of La Prensa, and Michael Wynn, a Riverside poet, and Irving Gaeta, a Fontana writer. <laughs> and uh, for this segment, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to have a, a couple selections from the Muse Literary Journal, jur journal put out by Riverside Community College. Uh, it is a journal that includes, of course, writers from uh, the campuses of the uh, community college as well as other emerging writers from around the country. Um, Irving, can you tell us a little bit about your, your piece and then sure. go ahead. And um, my piece follows uh, a man going to a friend's funeral. His friend he met while he was in college, he was a professor, and they kind of developed a, a, a special bond. I don't want to reveal too much because I want it. people to read it. Um, my first impression of Matthew was that he was a handsome man. I never knew many educated folks before then, except my grade school teachers, and they all looked like unrefrigerated ham. <laughs> the age on them seemed unhealthy and contagious. Patches of skin darkened and hardened, and strange hairs popped up. But, pro but Professor Matthew Richard Moore strolled in 15 minutes late, like he would the rest of the semester. Griff gripping a briefcase in one hand and waving casually, happily with the other, ignorant to our spite. He was young. He was only a few years older than me, actually, but I'd learned that later. His jawline was prominent. It ran, a strong, it ran in a strong line back, back down one ear, down and around his chin, and up to the other ear. He had, deep, he had a deep black color and fullness to his hair, and his skin only wrinkled when he smiled, which was often. He had dark brown eyes behind large horn rim glasses, and the women in class dropped their spite when he smiled and waved and welcomed them with his happy eyes. Their chests filled with quick inhales of air and their, pro their breasts propped up and out as if on display. I've never been able to figure out if women are conscious of this action or if they are masterful, borderline villainous manipulators or if they merely own a pair of lungs. I had been chatting up a pretty blonde girl. I'd sleep with her later, and she'd introduce me to my wife. I guess things worked out okay. I chatted her up, and she giggled at my accent, and then stopped and opened up her notebook. She had noticed Matthew staring at us, like we walked in 15 minutes late. But all he said was thank you, and he began lecturing. Well, that's nice. Thank you for the uh, age description at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Makes us feel better. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, um, Michael, you're a poet. All right. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the poem that, you've, uh, that you're going to share with us? And uh, yeah, this was a piece that I wrote about, I think it's been almost a year now. This is one of my earlier pieces that uh, I heard about the music accepting submissions around campus. We had flyers and posters around there, and I submitted this one. Luckily, I got accepted through applying submission, so I was really grateful to have that in here. Uh, as for the piece itself, I think it's better that I just read it and you'll get a feel for it itself. Uh, what's the title again? It's called Excuse Me Darling. Excellent. You'll have to excuse me, darling, if the questions asked have been the same shot in four rounds drunk within a one hour gap. I'm trying, I really am, but when the last 13 years are years spent alone, the biggest skill set learned is how to speak strictly in code. My professor, she'd frown at my vague wording, such bad syntax, when my brain sits like dead weight, leveraged by a lead rod jammed in my head. Your puzzled look as I try to explain, about, something, somewhere, sometimes, sort of, you know. And I know, sweetheart, it'd be for the best if I just said what I want to say. You're good to me, and you probably don't hold it against me. I've made roadblocks for so many side streets, so my apologies, sincerely, if you have to spin circles for me to speak. Oh. Thank you very much. Very good. Irving, uh, was your main character, the, or the teacher, was that inspired by somebody at RCC? No, but um, it was inspired, the main character, not Matthew, but the man who's narrating, was inspired by people I know. And uh, I kind of just took personality traits I like between a lot of people and just trying to merge it into somebody that was legally distingu distinguishable <laughs> from anyone else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And Michael, do you work uh, strictly in poems? Or? Uh, yeah, I work strictly in poems. Uh, we're slowly working towards short story, but that's a different adventure on itself. Have you put out any chapbooks yet? 
Uh, no, we're working on that uh, at the moment, or I'm working on that, I should say. But maybe you had a team. Oh, uh, we kind of do. <laughs> we're, uh, I'm also the president of the, writing, the Creative Writing Club at RCC, so we are, we're also kind of working to publish our own chapbooks periodically. Now, Muse started as a project of the Yes, it is. Uh, if memory serves me correctly, it started as a club and then later on became a class. And then that's where it is now. And so we're, uh, as part of a cl writing club at RCC, I'm kind of a separate organization, although I'm part of this at the same time. Mm -hmm. Started in 86, right? Right. Okay. Very good. Well, thank you for visiting us with today. Um, be sure to uh, read the Inlandia column in the, new, in the Press Enterprise every Tuesday. Uh, be sure to visit our uh, blog at pe.com, which is updated daily. Uh, and. Uh, for uh, Inlandia Literary Journeys, Orlando Ramirez and John Bender. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you, guys. Thanks.